All right, welcome back to the video where I'll be explaining how APC injection works through the code. So as a reminder, um, check out the video description for my quick disclaimer, as well as any sources for uh, resources referenced or whatever. All right, so last video, we went over the theory of APC injection what asynchronous uh, procedure calls were, and some example use cases for APCs. Now I'm going to show you how APC injection works with code with a very simple example. And the reason I'm doing a simple example is because I don't see a purpose in just flushing out this technique fully when it's not in combination with other things. So for example, if you're calling virtual alloc just like this, you know, you could run into EDR hooks when it when you get to NT allocate virtual memory or whatever it is. Um, you know, the shell code's unencrypted. And when the goal is just to learn how this kind of works through code, I don't really see a need to overcomplicate things. So we're just doing a simple proof of concept to reinforce understanding. All right, so we have uh, our shellcode here. This was generated from MSF Venom. Here's a command. Really simple, we've seen this before. Here's a shellcode, it spawns a calculator. Here's our dummy function. We're gonna have a th we're gonna create a thread that runs this dummy function, and then the parameters for sleepy x are the number of milliseconds to s the number of milliseconds to sleep, followed by a boolean for whether or not the thread becomes alertable. You can see I'll hover over it. So milliseconds and then alertable or not. So because we want the thread to enter the alertable state, we put true as the second parameter. And if you remember from the previous video, placing the thread in the alertable state causes it to check its APC queue for APCs that can be executed while the um, underlying functionality uh, runs, I guess. We have a function called APC injection, which takes a handle on the thread. APC injection initializes three variables P address will be the address of our allocation inside the this process's address space. DW old protection, in other words, D word old protection, is a variable, just a D word that will be set by virtual protect. And when you call virtual protect, you're changing the um, the permission bits of your allocation. So virtual protect will store the old protection level inside this this variable here, and then the size of our shell code. So first thing we do is we allocate space inside of our process address space for the shell code to sit in. Virtual alloc, right? We've seen this before. We then use mem copy to write our shell code into that allocation, you know, address of the where you want to write, where you're, what the contents you actually want to write, and then how many bytes you're writing in. Then virtual protect will change the permissions of the memory, like I explained before. So we're turning it to RWX, and then it'll populate the, it takes a pointer to the D word that'll store the old permission bits. Then we have queue user APC, which will add the task to the thread, the thread's APC queue. And we're all, we're operating based off of a handle to the thread. So, um, and then the, the APC task or the APC that we're scheduling in the queue is we're casting P address to a, um, to a pap function. So, uh, pap, I guess it's an APC func pointer, uh, but naming, I've just been calling it pap func. 
Um, if you don't remember, with Windows types, if something is a pointer, uh, it's often preceded with a P in the type name. Anyway, we cast the address of the allocation to a hat func or APC function pointer. And then we just return whether or not this function succeeded. If it had any errors along the way, it'll return false. Now here's main. Main is the driver code. We have our handle on the thread, initialized to null. It's not populated yet. And then the thread ID. So create thread will um, do exactly what it says. It'll, it'll make a thread. Uh, dummy function is the third parameter. You look at the third parameter. It is the start routine of the thread. So we give it dummy function. And then thread ID is going to do something similar as uh, DW protection. Actually, I could, I should do this. DW thread ID. Just to be consistent. So we make our thread. The thread has not started executing yet. Okay. We then uh, just make sure that the thread, the handle, isn't null, so we don't have um, any errors from create thread. Then we perform the APC injection. We're writing the shell code in. We're changing the permission. We're adding the shell code to the APC queue. Then here's where the thread actually executes. We wait for single object, pass it the handle to the thread. And then it should spawn the calculator, then close the handle and exit. So it's really simple. We just hit play and you see the calculator spawns. Not 100% sure what this error is. I looked it up. This error code um, has something to do with invalid memory access. But given the fact that the code worked, I wasn't inclined to investigate it very much, but I'm sure there's some logic flaw here somewhere. If anyone spots it, drop a comment and I'll, I'll investigate. But yeah, just quick proof of concept to reinforce understanding. I didn't put a whole lot of effort into this. And you could do this with remote injection too. So, but yeah, uh, that's all for today's video. Stay tuned for the next topic. Um, might be a review of the certified red team operator certification not sure yet i've been meaning to do a video on that for a while but anyway stay tuned for the next video and that's all for now